What's up friends and welcome to the 2021 advent calendar picks my TBR video. If you're new here I started this tradition last year where I got an advent calendar, you gave me prompts, I put the prompts behind these doors and I use a number generator to pick which door I open. I am very excited to bring this back. It is so much fun so let's just get into it. I love all of the prompts that you sent me. They were so fun so thank you if you did participate because because you giving me prompts helps me make fun videos like this. So I have my sloth advent calendar and I'm going to get right into the video. So today is Monday, December 13th and I have my sloth advent calendar and I'm going to get right into the first book. I am nervous <laughs> but excited. So let's see. Siri, give me a number from one to four. It's one. <laughs> okay, Siri's giving me one. So first I have to read a mystery or thriller that my friend Sarah gave five stars. Sarah is my booktube friend that I met in San Francisco and I'm really glad that I started this video now before I finished my current read because some of these prompts I need to actually get a book for it that I don't actually own. So I'm actually glad I did that. So I'm going to ask Sarah and get this video started. So I told Sarah that I got her prompt and asked for some recommendations. She's going to send me a video and then I will react to it and figure out what my first book of this video will be. Hello, Sarah sent me a video. I'm going to react to it. I'll be reading three books in this video. I was just re-watching last year's video to get some inspiration and just kind of refresh myself and I started out the video with a mystery historical fiction so it looks like history is repeating itself a little bit here. So let's see what Sarah has for me. I'm super excited but a little nervous. Hello Alex, welcome to my office. So I know you're here for one thing and that is for me to give you some awesome kick-ass thriller or mystery recommendation. And let me tell you, you came to yes. the right place. So I have four books for you that I think you'll really enjoy. So let me just go through them one by one. First book is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I've been wanting to read that. I've been wanting to read that. Jackson, it's a really, really good like mur murder mystery. It's about um, this girl that was murdered and this other girl that's trying to solve it for, um, it's almost like a thesis something like that. I think you might enjoy this. I'm, I'm not sure, but I really enjoy it. So check it out if you want. And then there's um this one. Yes. yes. Hi. Hi. It's, editing. it's editing Sarah here to tell you something that I forgot to say. We Yo, Sarah made a whole freaking YouTube video for this. Shit. This is the book that I'm talking about next. In the next clip, you're going to hear me say that I'm going to let it slide for the prompt I gave you, Alex. That's the reason. It's because I myself haven't rated it or re read it, but I think you'll like it. So that's why I'm including okay, it. So we have to, we can skip this one because it does not qualify for this prompt. Got it. I just really, really want you to, you know, try it out if you pick it. So yeah, feel free to do so. I will let this one slide for the um, prompt thing. If you choose this, you will still fulfill the prompt. So this is about um, a family that like searches for missing people like in the mountains or something and they have a team of dogs. <laughs> it's just something that maybe um, I think you would like to check out. The next two book I don't actually have on hand, but um, one of them is called Ten, Ten by uh, Gretchen McNeil. And it's like um, a retelling of an Agatha Christie book, and then there were none, um, but you know, more like modern. And it's, it's like really, um, really fun in my opinion. Ten by Gretchen McNeil. And then the last one is Five Little Pigs by Agatha Christie. And that's a um, one of my favorite Agatha Christie books. And um, 
I'm not quite sure if you will like that one, but you could try it out if you want to. I really like it, so if you want to take a chance and try it out, go for it. Um, okay, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of what I'm going to do. That's it. Actually, you know what? I want to include one more. There's a book called All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban. I feel like I might have that on my TBR. All Your Twisted Secrets. Sometimes I just add thrillers to my TBR and then just like don't read them. So I have a lot of options here. <laughs> I think I actually added this to my TBR, but I'm gonna have to- I just have a feeling it. maybe you will like that one too. I gave it three stars actually. So um, I, I want you to have some choices. Hello, editing Sarah here again. So I just wanted to add one more thing in here, which is that all your twisted secrets by diana urban is like compared to the breakfast club with murder which is why i think sign me up for that i like that i'm gonna add that to my tbr anyway is maybe kind of your vibe alex okay <laughs> okay um I don't know why she's going to say that that's my vibe. I don't know what kind of vibes I give off that that would be my vibe. <laughs> but uh, it is. So it sounds interesting, but it does not complete the prompt. I'm including it in this video. Just go ahead and um, feel free to choose it. So I am going to look up some of those, but I think what I'm going to go with is The Good Girl's Guide to Murder because I've been wanting to read it. I've heard it's really good and Sarah gave it a five star. So if I don't read that one, I'll let you know, but I have a feeling that that's going to be the one that I pick. But I have to finish my audiobook first of the book I'm currently reading and then I will resume this video. It's Wednesday, December 15th, and I just finished two of the books I was in the middle of, and I'm going to start my first read of this video. I decided to go with 10 by Gretchen McNeil. It's the only book that I had available to me, so I am going to listen to the audiobook on Scribd. My library did have Good Girl's Guide on Overdrive, but I was going to be 24th in line, so I'm just going to do 10. So let's read what it's about. I know it's a YA mystery thriller so it says 10 teens three days one killer it was supposed to be the weekend of their lives an exclusive house party on henry island best friends meg and minnie are looking forward to two days of boys booze and fun-filled luxury but what starts out as fun turns twisted after the discovery of a dvd with a sinister message vengeance is mine and things only get worse from there Okay, that actually sounds so fun. Uh, I'm very excited for this, so I do understand why Sarah would recommend this to me. So I'm super excited. Uh, let's just get into it. It's 11.47. I still have to do some work for today. I start work at 12, so pretty soon. I need to finish decorating my room because that video is going up on Friday. I did have some Christmas festivities planned for this vlog. Tomorrow I was going to go and see Gritty. He's at like a Christmas light thing, but the person I was going with couldn't go anymore. So that's not going to happen. However, on Friday, I am going to see Spider-Man. So that means I need to watch all of the movies. I'm a very big Spider-Man fan. However, I don't know what happened to me, but I just didn't end up watching uh, far from home. I don't know why. I just didn't. Um, mainly because I think COVID happened. I didn't get to go to the theater, but also I was kind of hoping it would be on a streaming service. That didn't happen. And um, I kind of have the thought of if I'm paying for subscription services, especially Disney Plus, why are all the Spider-Mans not on it? The animated ones are, but the live actions are not. I'm a very big Spider-Man fan, so I'm super excited to go and see that movie. Obviously, I won't spoil it, but I'll bring you along. And I am actually super excited. So I'm going to watch all the Spider-Man movies if I can. I don't want to like have to buy all of them, but 
we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll film this part, but I am going to meet my nephew for the first time. It's his first birthday and because he was born during the pandemic, I didn't get to meet him yet. So I'm super excited. I was putting all of his presents together. I'm just super excited. It's my first time being an uncle and I'm just super excited. So very excited about that experience. This weekend I have some video stuff to do because we're doing the 12 days of Vlogmas and I still have videos that I haven't filmed because of course every time I try and do something the universe is just like huh, we're not gonna let you do that. We're not gonna let you actually do what you scheduled to do because why would that actually happen to me? And then for a video, I am making a gingerbread house and I'm also making cookies. So you will see those videos this weekend. So I need to hopefully do that either tomorrow or Friday. I just have so much shit to do and not enough time. I also want to get more of my Christmas cards written. I started some a couple of days ago, but I need to finish the rest going out to my booktube friends so I can go to the post office and get stamps and get them mailed out at the end of the week. Speaking of mail, I got some things yesterday, including a Christmas card from my friend Xander at This Cubed. Look how cool with these stamps and all. So cool. And I got a gift yesterday from one of my subscribers. So thank you to Natalie S for sending sending me a copy of Ace of Spades off of my Amazon wish list. I really was surprised getting this in the mail yesterday. I was like, have I ordered something recently? Because I was doing some Christmas shopping, but I was kind of worried that like one of the books that I bought for a friend to go to their house accidentally came to my house. So I was really surprised. Her message was super kind, so thank you again, Natalie, for sending me Ace of Spades. I can't wait to read it. If you ever want to buy me a book, my Amazon wish list is linked down below, but don't feel inclined to do so. Just watching my videos, giving them a like is enough support for me. So now I'm going to start my day and I will see you later. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Been wondering just what you It's Friday. I am about to make cookies. I'm waiting for my tea to steep and then I'm gonna get into it. I have videos to film for Vlogmas. Most of my Vlogmas videos are pre-filmed but I just have some more that I didn't get around to and this week was just not a good filming week. Like I did not get any filming done like I wanted to. It just happens because once I start a project my life is like ah gotcha. That's not going to happen, but I'm about to make some spritz cookies, which is pretty exciting, and I'll listen to my audiobook. My whole Vlogmas schedule is going to be rearranged now because of this vlog and just the things happening. I was supposed to do my gingerbread house today to post it on Saturday, but it's just gonna be too much, so I'm just gonna do that tomorrow, and my Christmas cookie video will be up on Saturday. So I have some things to do. 
I want to finish a book because I just want to continue this vlog because it was supposed to go out on Monday, but now it'll probably just go out Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on what happens because I want to read three books and then I have another Christmas reading vlog I want to do. I also was going to see Spider-Man today, but I ended up just canceling my ticket and I'm just probably going to go like next week or something because it just didn't work out today. I had a lot to do today in terms of Christmas shopping because I just haven't really done much. Yesterday, I was able to get everything online, which was good, but I just had to pick up a couple of things today. I was looking for a first birthday card everywhere and they give you like no options. Every store I went to gave me like two options and I just didn't like them. I ended up going to my local indie today and I got two cards, one for my nephew and one one for my cousin who just had his first baby. So I decided to just get all of those cards at my local indie. They had so many things and it was awesome, but their first birthday card selection was not good. I couldn't believe how hard it is to get a first birthday card. I really thought it would be easy, but they just don't give you a lot of options. So I just ended up getting whatever was there. And I also ended up getting him a happy birthday book. I am definitely spoiling this kid rotten, but I want to because I love being an uncle and I'm just excited. As always, I never do anything on time and I was gonna watch all the movies. Did I do that? No, but this morning I started watching Spider-Man Homecoming as I was doing my Christmas cards. So I ended up doing my Christmas cards, which was good, but now I just have video stuff to do and reading. So I'm gonna go listen to my audiobook, make my Christmas cookies, film the Christmas cookie book tag, and hopefully I will be back later with a reading update. Hurry up. Nathan put the disc in the machine and hit play. The number 10 appeared on the screen. It was animated as if it had been written by hand and then a red slash crossed right through it. I have two hours and 38 minutes left of 10. I am really, it, I guess, enjoying it. It is super thrilling. I just got to a part where I had to just stop the audiobook because I was like, like what the hell is going on? I honestly got like a little chill and a thrill. So Sarah recommended this because she said it was so thrilling and she hit the nail on the head with that because it is, it is super thrilling. There's also mental health rep, and I'm not sure how to feel about that yet. I am a little uncomfortable about it. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable with the representation, but I don't know why. Like, there's nothing that has been, like, horrible where I'm like, oh, this is horrible representation. We have a character with bipolar disorder and anxiety, and another character has depression. And I was skeptical at the beginning because the book kind of opens up talking about our one character who takes antidepressants. And I was just like, uh oh, <laughs> like, 
what could go wrong here. But it's actually interesting because I haven't read a lot of books with mental health rep where the characters take medication. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I'll probably figure it out by the end of the book, but I'm really enjoying the thrill that I'm on. This is also set in winter, so it is about these kids at a lake house and just everyone starts dying. I'm excited to see what happens at the end because we have a character that I'm suspecting because he's totally an asshole. He's the worst. Honestly, this is just a whole house of just awful teenagers. <laughs> So we're putting awful teenagers in a house together and just seeing who survives. I don't believe I've ever read an isolation book before, so this is pretty interesting. I'm going to finish it up, edit my video for tomorrow, and I will see you tomorrow to just talk about my thoughts. Bye. This is such a YA novel because why are they kissing while people are dying? I <laughs> know. Hello, it is Saturday at midnight. I finished 10 by Gretchen McNeil, giving it a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. And now that I slept on it and have some clearer thoughts about the book, I can pinpoint what my problem was with the mental health rep. And it just made them all seem crazy. I was reading a review and I'll have it linked down below. And I was like, this is my exact thought. It's that they are Oh, like it's kind of like the off their meds trope which I did not appreciate at all it was weird because they're like oh like this girl's a freak and I'm like oh oh man <laughs> even though we do have a cast of characters who are all teenagers and they're like all horrible people this was just so thrilling and I loved it like I was listening to the audiobook and I couldn't stop. Like I literally stopped everything to just sit and listen to the audiobook and I loved it. So thank you to Sarah for recommending this because it was awesome. And now let me grab my advent calendar and we can pick the next book. So that book was from door number one. Siri, pick a number from one to 24. It's 13. 13. All right. Okay, lucky 13. The book that has been on your Goodreads want to read for the longest. Now I'm trying to read books that I own too so I'm going to try and figure this one out and we'll see because I haven't really been using Goodreads that much so I might have to also go to my story graph so let me do that and then I will come back with the book. So I checked my Goodreads and the longest book on my want to read shelf was Ask the Passengers by A.S. King. I've never read an A.S. King before, but I know that this has queer rep in it and I can get the audiobook on Libby. So I'm going to get another audiobook and I will talk to you later. I have some videos to film. My nephew's birthday party is today, so I'm going to get ready for that and I'll probably be back later. I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done today, but if I do, I will update you. Hello. It is uh, Sunday, and uh, I am under the weather, and so I think the 12 days of Vlogmas ends here. It ends at the gingerbread house, which sucks because I don't know why every time I try and do something, my life is like, uh, no, we're not actually going to let you do that. And I apologize because I feel like every time I try to make something fun, it just doesn't work out. I hate that. I hate it so much. I was hydrating and everything, trying not to get sick. And, uh, well, here we are now. So in an hour, I'm going to watch the Santa Claus with my patrons and just chill, try and listen to more of the audiobook for my set passengers hoping I feel better later so then maybe I can get this all done but I really apologize that it's probably just gonna be cut short so that sucks for me but I guess I'll just try it next year I'm pissed off because I literally oh my god I've done literally everything right and just the universe hates me so just gonna take it easy see what happens and I'll be back later It's been a while. 
It is currently Friday, and I finished Ask the Passengers. I'm going to tell you my thoughts and then wrap this video up. Sorry that it's only two books, but I was sick this week, and I just want to get this video out. But I'm going to do a compromise by taking the rest of your reading challenges, put them in a jar, and I will pick them out throughout the year so I can still use them because they were awesome. So let's get into it. I am feeling a lot better today. I just have a cold, but it definitely knocked me out for the week. I am going to just slowly recover. So thank you to everyone who was really kind on my last 12 days of Vlogmas video. I'm so pissed that I had to stop because I was so excited. I was furious that I had to stop because I just feel like I can never complete anything. There's always next year. <laughs> so both of the books I read came out in 2012, which is a nice coincidence. And I want to touch a little bit on Ask the Passengers. I don't, like, I don't know. I liked it, but I don't have like thoughts where I'm like, oh, this was amazing. But I like what it had to offer. We have a young girl who is questioning her sexuality and thinks that she's a lesbian. But she has a lot of dismissal around her. Her family are definitely homophobic. Uh, so homophobic that she is not ready. Um, and there's just a lot of conversations of like, oh, kind of pushing her to come out. Which I didn't really like. But I understand why that happened in the book. Also, it came out in 2012. Not like this is warranted at all, but there are so many slurs. There's so many slurs. There's so many homophobic slurs. There's the R slur. Uh, there's so many that I was not prepared for at all. I didn't like that. Um, it was horrible. Um, just having to hear them in an audiobook. I was, or well, just in general, no, no one should ever see that. So the D word is very prevalent from people who are not in that community. So that's really annoying. But I did like that there's a plot where the sister is on the girls hockey team. And that warrants for a conversation about lesbians. Uh, that is not very pretty at all. But I liked that. However, I wish that we would have saw more. Like, it was just kind of like, oh, she's on the girls' hockey team and, like, her mom never goes to the games. But, like, we don't really get to see a game at all, which I was mad about. I, if you're giving me hockey, you have to give me all the hockey. Um, but I did enjoy that there was some hockey mentioned. There's a lot to unpack with this book because we do have a girl who is questioning her sexuality, which I love. I love stories about that. I think they're super important and we don't really see enough of them. I feel like there should be a few because if someone is questioning their sexuality, they should feel represented. Um, everyone should feel represented in any kind of media. I really like the passengers aspect where Astrid is just sending her love to passengers because she feels like she doesn't get any love. And I feel like that was the biggest impact of the story. Besides the questioning her sexuality part, there was a lot. And guess how I knew it was set in PA? Because they go to a gay bar and I was like, why do I feel like I know this? Because they say Chestnut and Fifth. This gay bar is not on Chestnut and Fifth but I immediately knew that it was Philadelphia. <laughs> I immediately knew. I was like, Chestnut Street? What? Uh, definitely knew it was set in PA. Like, after I heard that, I had to stop the audiobook and check to see where it was set. And then I found out A.S. King is from Reading, PA. Uh, so that was cool. Um, but overall, I'm giving it a four out of five. I don't think it was horrible. So now here's the big question. Would I recommend this for you to read in 2021 or 2022? Um, I think I would still say yes, but just go into it knowing that there's a lot of slurs. Oh my God. And a lot of homophobia. So I would say if you don't want to read a book about a bunch of homophobia, then this is not the book for you. But I still think it was a good book. I understand why it has a lot of mixed reviews because I was looking on Goodreads and there's a lot of mixed reviews, 
but those reviews are from like 2012 to like 2015 or even 2017. So in this video I read two books from 2012 and I gave them both four stars. I read 10 by Gretchen McNeil. I really enjoyed how thrilling this book was. It was really fun. And then, like I just said, I read Ask the Passengers by A.S. King, my first ever A.S. King. Will I read her again? Probably. I have Gloria O'Brien here somewhere, I believe. So maybe that'll be my next one. But if you've read her, let me know what your favorite A.S. King book is that I should read next. Let me know in the comments and I'll read them. So that was having an advent calendar pick my TBR. I'm sorry if this vlog sucked. I feel like it was just such a mess of the last couple weeks that I just didn't get anything accomplished but I read two good books so that is something that I can take out of this. I hope you're all staying safe and having a great day and a great holiday if you celebrate. Thank you all for supporting me this year, supporting me in my 12 days of Vlogmas videos, even though it was the seven days of Vlogmas. We'll try next year. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting and I will hopefully see you soon.